The mountains are incredibly beautiful in winter. They're a bit of a paradise, but a paradise which can transform into hell in a split second. And this is exactly what happened to me on the 28th of March, 2008. So today I'm gonna share with you the mistakes I made on that day and also the lessons I learned from it. I got taken by this huge avalanche that dragged me over two and a half kilometers and over 1200 meters of vertical. All of a sudden, I was going from being the hero, the champ that just won the world champion title, from being a little piece of meat getting dragged into an ocean of snow and getting crushed completely. And it's basically a miracle that I'm here today because this kind of avalanche, you normally don't survive them. You can imagine that after the avalanche, my first reaction was to just want to be like, never again, I have to stop free riding, I have to stop this nonsense, I'm just an irresponsible father. But being in my hospital room, I kept on looking at the mountains, seeing lines everywhere and, and thinking, man, this is something that I love, this is something that is a part of me, and I gotta find a way to make it more reasonable, make the risk more acceptable. So today I'm going to share with you the mistakes I made on that day and also the lessons I learned from it. I clearly missed just the elements, so the temperature, the time of the day, the amount of snow. I kind of was taken into my bubble. I had probably five, six runs under my feet and I completely forgot to feel things around me. And this is crucial in the mountains. Avalanche danger is the highest on 35 degrees slopes. When it's gonna break, the snow will have gathered and will not have cleaned itself out through time. So when it will go, it will go big. And this is exactly what happened to me. For the human mind, it's really easy to be really impressed and scared of the steep, of the size of the mountain or something like this. But when you see a really gentle peach going down, wide open with powder on it, it's really hard to have the red sense of emergency blinking, but this is exactly when you should have it. So in order to read the dangers in the mountains and those dangers coming from so many different sides, I've decided to cultivate fear in the way that it would help me to stay always alert and see all the signs that are around me and all the potential danger that could come with them. So another mistake was that I rushed to save time and also money. And that directly comes from the fact that I misjudged the danger on the run and I didn't even look at it. So I just said, oh, this is easy, let's just do it quickly. But in the mountain, when you rush, it can be dangerous. Normally in all the faces that we shoot, we try to find always outruns that are clean and flat, where there will be no hole, no trees, no crevasses. And that usually makes the difference because if anything happens, any kind of slide will spread out. But on that day, the outrun was like a thousand meter vertical and had a gully at the end. And that's something that I completely misjudged and which should have been a big red warning sign. Another point which misled me is that there were some touring tracks on the face and some riding tracks right next to the face. And to me, I saw, oh, there are tracks. It's all good, it's been tested, it's fine. And very often avalanches happen after many tracks go down, sometimes after hundreds of tracks. And that day it was the case. So this winter or next winter, when you're at the top of the line and you have any doubt, you can always come back tomorrow or next year. The mountains are always going to be there, so humility and patience should be packed in your bag. Ego can make you do really stupid things and has no place into the mountains. So remember, leave it at home or at the bar. Freeriding is about enjoying the nature, enjoying the moment, enjoying it with friends and enjoying it for a long time. <laughs>